October 4th, 2018 was going to be an exciting day in my life. My new book, The Happy Human, had just launched. And I was going to be interviewed on live TV at 4 p.m. on ABC7. Instead, at 4 p.m., I chose to do something completely different. I was on a stretcher in the emergency room of Stanford Hospital with an IV needle in my arm, rapidly losing consciousness. You must be thinking, Gopi, what happened? How did he get there? Well, I said I chose, nobody actually chooses to be in the emergency room, but for 12 weeks leading up to that day, I'd made a set of lifestyle choices that led to the crash. In those 12 weeks, I traveled to 12 cities in four countries, and besides meeting the demands of a uh, demanding job in a tech company, I had also competed in the World Championship of Public Speaking, launched a new book, produced a Kirtan Music Festival, and to top it, actively participated in Burning Man. <laughs> that loan will get you. <laughs> but fueled by ambition and desire, and this notion that more is better, I drove myself into these projects, ignoring the basic loss of self-care. And the loss of nature are immutable, even if they're inconvenient. And nature roared back at me. And what led to my recovery was a simple piece of advice that my health coach, Anita, taught me. Anita is a health coach at the South Asian Heart Center, and she would end every call with a piece of advice. Take your meds every day. You must be thinking, what is this meds that Anita is talking about? Anita was not referring to little magic pills that come in a bottle like this. She was talking about a simple formula, M4 meditation, E4 exercise, D4 diet as in healthy nutrition, and S4 sleep. <coughs> and you must be thinking, like, what is the logical basis for the meds formula? And to explain that, I want to walk you through a construct, a framework. Our body, your body, has 78 organs, and this has been true for millions of years of human evolution. But in the last 30 years, you've all grown a 79th organ, this device here, <laughs> at the end of our hands. And this 79th organ is pretty amazing. It can translate languages for you. It can help you navigate around the planet. And it can capture all of your embarrassing moments forever. <laughs> but even as we get enamored and spend so much time with the 79th organ, the simple fact is the most complex, sophisticated system you all use every single day is not this, but this. I call it your three Bs, your body, your brain, your breath, and I call it affectionately my inner net. And thanks to the advice that Anita gave me, I used the METS formula to put in my inner net into a state of peak performance. But here's something else that you need to understand about your inner net. The first is that only you can be responsible for nourishing it, for nurturing it, for putting it into a state of peak performance. Others can guide you, mentor you, coach you, but you have to bear unconditional responsibility for your own inner net. The second is that all of your life experience is being filtered by your inner net all the time. The lunch you just had, the amazing music you listened to this morning, the incredible talks you're listening on the TEDx stage, every bit of this life experience is being filtered, processed, and interpreted by your internet. Third, all of your life expression also are outputs of your internet. The next great business plan you write, or the delicious dinner you may cook, or a beautiful dress you design, whatever is our self-expression has to come from our internet. 
And therefore, it is logical to conclude that the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your internet. If you put this complex system into a state of peak performance, you experience life at a peak state, you express yourself at a peak state. And during my process of recovery, taking my meds every day, what I realized is not only uh, is meds help me put me in a state of peak state, peak performance, but that peak state and peak performance was actually the portal to fulfillment and happiness. Now you must be sitting there thinking, well, why does this work? How do you know it works? And most importantly, who has the time to do it all? <laughs> yes? Well, why does it work? All of life is one giant experiment. And experiments, by definition, lead to unexpected results. But we will never find out until we try. But thankfully for us, over thousands of years, humans who have gone before us have conducted tiny experiments around their body, the brain, the breath, and figured out what works and what does not in terms of nutrition and sleep and exercise. And they left tiny footprints for us. We have inherited an incredible operating manual from all of the wisdom traditions across many cultures. How do we know it works? In addition to all of these experiments that took place over thousands of years, modern science has got into the act, and over the last 50 years, using scientific evidence-based testing, neuroscientists, exercise kinesiologists, nutritionists, and sleep researchers have looked at each of those four pillars and accumulated tons of evidence that these four things actually move our inner net into a state of peak performance. That still leaves that question I'm seeing in all of your eyes. Who has the time to do it? I know this. I get it. You all have 24 hours every single day. This is one of the most egalitarian distribution of resources across humanity. <laughs> 24 hours. So I'm going to ask you, urge you to consider a param paradigm shift where you flip the model and so you start with each block of 24 hours and the first thing you fit in, prioritize, is to take your meds. How long does it take? Somewhere between seven hours, sorry, eight hours, all the way up to 11. But that still leaves you 13 to 16 hours to do everything else. And those 13 to 16 hours, when you're operating in a completely different state, in a peak, state of peak performance, will be hours of peak productivity and joy and happiness. Now, you might be getting a little intimidated by these terms, meditation, exercise, nutrition, sleep. You don't have to be. I want to reassure you, because after all, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And the way Anita was coaching me, I realized that you can take simple basic first steps and what would it look like? Meditation can simply mean taking a few moments of contemplative reflective time every day, creating a little bit of spaciousness in whatever tradition calls out to you. And by exercise, a simple first step is just move your body in whatever way that movement appeals to you. And by diet, Again, that simple first step before you get into all of the complex advice or nutrition that is available is to be conscious of what you put into your body, how much you put in, and why you chose to put it in. And ideally, you want to put in things that grow on a plant and not made in a plant, as in a factory. <laughs> and the less human processing involved from the plant to your mouth, the better. And by sleep, what Anita is referring to was seven to nine hours of restful sleep every single night. So remember, all of your life is one giant experiment towards happiness. Experiment with the meds formula and put your internet, your body, your breath, your brain into a state of peak performance. And through that process, find your own portal to become the happy human. May you all be the happy humans.